All right, guys, I'm back. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to have you guys go ahead and let's draw a single plant cell. This is kind of review for you. And so I'm going to let you guys go ahead and try to draw a single plant cell and then um, see if you can draw a chloroplast. And then I'm going to um, do that as you do it. Okay, so here I have my drawings. If you guys want to pause it, if you were unable to draw, especially the chloroplast, because that's new uh, for you. Um, the plant cell is not so new. And so you can see that I drew the thick, um, we're looking over here at drawing a single plant cell. I drew the thick green cell wall, a large vacuole in the middle that stores uh, water and different things. I have the nucleus that's holding the genetic material. And then I drew a lot of these small little green dots. Um, and those are the chloroplasts. And so in the leaf cells, those outer leaf cells are just filled with chloroplasts. Um, over here, then I took one of those chloroplasts and I drew an enlarged chloroplast. And a chloroplast kind of looks like a kidney bean. Um, there are three main parts that you really definitely need to know. And although how I drew this chloroplast, it looks very simplified. Um, it's actually full of thylakoid. Thylakoid are, I think of them like stacks of pancakes. And they're basically just membranes, but these membranes are what allows us to capture the sun's light. And so these stacks of pancakes we call thylakoid. So that's a vocab word that you're going to need to know, thylakoid. And it's where part of the process of photosynthesis happens. It's the light-dependent part of photosynthesis. Over here, there's some open space you can see. Um, the open space is called the stroma, and actually it's not like half of the chloroplast is open and half of it has thylakoid. I just draw it that way to help us understand the process a little bit easier. Um, there's thylakoid throughout, and then whatever open space, whatever is not thylakoid, we call stroma. It is surrounded by actually a double membrane, uh, just like the cell's membrane also. And so I have the membrane drawn, the stroma, the open space, and the thylakoid. Um, chloroplasts are green because they contain a pigment really heavy in these thylakoid membranes known as chlorophyll. And so again, chlorophyll, all these new vocabulary words that you guys you have to practice. Um, in your own words, what does chlorophyll molecule do? If you think back to the last video, the chlorophyll molecule it captures sunlight. So it captures sunlight um, in order to be used for the process of photosynthesis. Besides light, what else does a plant need for photosynthesis? So the two things that a plant needs besides light would be water, so H2O, you guys know that is water, and it also needs carbon dioxide, so carbon dioxide, CO2. So if we start to think about the process of photosynthesis, and now I have a nice little picture if you compare this picture um, right here. Uh, to the picture I drew, you can see why I drew it the way that I did. And so let's really hit what is photosynthesis now? Well, photosynthesis is basically a chemical reaction. And so in a chemical reaction, kind of like baking cookies, you need ingredients to go in and then you get a product out. And so we call, we talk about a reaction in um, science, we don't talk about them ingredients. We talk about the things that go in would be called the reactants. And so in this case, if you look at the picture below and you think about, well, what are the reactants? Well, look at the arrows. What arrows are going into 
the chloroplasts. And you can see right here, we have light, the arrows are going into. We have water, um, because the arrow is going into that thylakoid membrane. And then we also have carbon dioxide going into the chloroplast. And so what are reactants? If we're going to write this out as a chemical reaction, we would say that our reactants are water, H2O, plus carbon dioxide, plus we need light. Light isn't really a molecule, but we definitely need light. And so we'll put light here. And so those are the things that are going in. There are a couple other things inside that we definitely need. Um, and we'll talk about those uh, in a little bit. But what comes out of photosynthesis? What is the goal? What do we rearrange the water and the carbon dioxide into? And with the light's energy, uh, we produce um, one byproduct that we get rid of would be oxygen gas. And so oxygen comes out. That's a product. And then the other product is sugar. And I like to, again, I say this every time, but I really like to write sugar as its chemical makeup because then you guys can see where the different things are coming from. And so sugar is C6, H12, and O6. And so you can see it has carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Over here on this side, we have carbon, we have hydrogen, and we have oxygen. And so this oxygen right here actually becomes that oxygen, and then the hydrogen and the carbon dioxide become the sugar. Um, you see down below, I'll put boxes around the products. We have the carbon dioxide coming out, and we have the sugar coming out. This process, you guys, you're going to have to spend some time making sure that you know, not only as just a, an equation, H2O plus CO2 plus light gives you oxygen and sugar, but take a look and really spend some time on this image because the image is going to help you understand that this process really happens in two steps. There is the part of the process that is taking place right over here, which is called the light reactions, or it's dependent on light. It needs light. It cannot happen if we remove light. And so in the night, this isn't happening. And then there is a second part that is happening, and this part happens all the time. It doesn't need light. Um, if the light goes away forever, it couldn't keep happening because it relies on the products that come from the light. But um, this can happen through the night uh, because it's, it's light uh, independent. It doesn't depend on the light. Um, we also call it the Kelvin cycle. And so you guys are going to need to know that as both. Um, light reactions are light dependent. They depend on light being present. And the Kelvin cycle is also known as the dark cycle, but it doesn't need dark. It just is light independent. It does not rely on light. So let's answer some of these questions here. Um, things you're going to need to know. So what molecule provides the energy for the dark phase or the Kelvin cycle? of photosynthesis, acting like a little rechargeable battery. This is where we got to get into the middle here. I'm going to erase some of the stuff that I have because I want you to be able to see, ooh, there's some other molecules up here in the middle that we are going to have to talk about if we really want to understand this process. And so what molecule provides energy for the dark phase? Well, the light doesn't. The light's not there. And so temporarily what we do is we take an ADP, and we attach a phosphate and we create some ATP. And so in the light reactions, we actually make, we actually charge um, ADP and we create a little bit of cellular energy. And so this is ATP. ATP is cellular energy. And so we use a little bit of cellular energy in order to um, make sure that Kelvin cycle can happen even when it is dark. Does the dark phase need darkness? No, it does not. Um, however, it is light 
independent, which means it does not need light. It can happen in the light, but it doesn't have to happen just in the light. It can also happen in the dark. Unlike the, unlike the light reactions, they have to happen just in the light. Uh, number 10, what part of ATP comes off? So ATP right here, boom, energy. Keeps this cycle going, and as soon as that ATP's energy is used in the cycle, a phosphorus pops off. It's kind of like it uncharges the battery. ADP has to come over and get more phosphorus. So what part of ATP comes off in order to release energy? That would be the P, and that is phosphate. A phosphate group comes off, but it can be recharged. That's why you need phosphate in your body in order to have cellular energy. Number 11, which phase of photosynthesis releases oxygen? So releasing oxygen right here. I have oxygen. Let me redo that because it looks goofy how I just drew that. Um, go like this. Right here, I have oxygen coming out. So that's releasing oxygen, and it's coming from the light reactions. And so the light reactions for the light dependent phase. What is the name of the molecule that carries hydrogen? So this is a hydrogen carrier. I think of this as like a running back in football. It grabs a football. It carries it up the field to make some gains. Well, if we look right in here, we have a molecule, NADP. And up here, it goes in and then it grabs the hydrogen. And so what molecule carries hydrogen from water? It is NADP. P plus. So it has a positive um, cation, cation, so it's charged and it can grab onto that hydrogen when water is broken apart. And so we call it an electron carrier because it's carrying that hydrogen um, charged particle. Number 13, what would happen if any one of the ingredients needed for photosynthesis was not available. Well, if we take away light, if we take away water, if we take away carbon dioxide, then what happens to photosynthesis? It would stop. It would stop. You would not have photosynthesis happening anymore if you got rid of one of the ingredients. Um, if I tried to make omelets without eggs, I'm not getting omelets. I need the eggs to make the omelets. And so um, I have to have all of those ingredients or it does not work. And the last question, plants use water during photosynthesis. Where does the hydrogen from the water go? Well, if you come up here, the hydrogen from the water, it's right here. So hydrogen comes in. It goes to the NADP, and then it goes to the sugar. And so where does the hydrogen go? It goes to the sugar, S-U-G-A-R, sugar. Where does the oxygen from the water go? It is released. It is released as oxygen gas, one of the products of photosynthesis and allows us to breathe in oxygen gas. This is the end of this activity. Um, this gives you kind of an overview of photosynthesis, and now it's going to be your opportunity to dig in deeper into some of the readings with the questions and the vocabulary and put it all together. Good luck. I hope you enjoy it. Don't um, count yourself out and give yourself the best opportunity to learn and understand this amazing process that provides life on planet Earth.